Okay, everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org. I'm here with my co-host, Jeff Kelly. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship production. We're here for two days at MIT. We're in the Tang Center. We're covering the MIT Information Quality uh, event, the symposium. It's really an event targeted toward the chief data officer and, and the other practitioners within organizations that are struggling with problems of, of data quality, information quality, uh, governance things that we don't talk enough about in the big data world. And so that's why you know, we were excited when the folks from MIT invited theCUBE here. Peter Anlian is here, he's a founding member of An Anlian Consulting and is also general chair of the MIT Chief Data Officer Information Quality Symposium. Peter, thanks for taking some time out and sharing your perspectives on oh, theCUBE. Thank you guys for being here, this is great. Uh, I know that we threw you a couple of curveballs uh, as we were planning the setup, but I bet you're used to those, aren't oh you? Oh yeah, it's a piece of cake here. Yeah. <laughs> we just had to find somebody who knows how to hit those curves, and we did. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> His name was Rich Wang. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, and thank you for stretching us a little bit. Well, we, I say, we're excited to be here, and, and well, tell us a little bit about um, your role as, as co-chair, and then we want to get some of your perspectives from your consulting. Uh, well, I group. came in uh, a few years ago, I was invited by a friend to come to this symposium, and uh, there have been traditionally three tracks uh, public, uh, business and finance, and healthcare. And at that time, I was doing most of my work in healthcare. And I was, uh, I attended all the uh, healthcare uh, information quality tracks and saw parallels between the challenges that uh, these smart folks who were dedicated to healthcare were having uh, as compared to the uh, smart folks who were working in uh, information science. And you know, people are people, so uh, the same uh, organizational development and communication, leadership, et cetera, uh, skills and rules apply. So I uh, got to know Rich, and you know, when you uh, say, hey Rich, I, had a, I have a suggestion for that, he goes, okay, you're on the committee. <laughs> All right, you're hired. <laughs> so it's, and then, okay, you're heading the committee. But uh, it's been a great uh, uh, ride here, mingling with these folks uh, in this industry and especially being around the MIT community. So what's your background? Talk a little bit about Anlian Consulting. Um, I was in broadcasting for 20 plus years into a, uh, with a regional broadcasting company, news producing, uh, one of the, uh, about the 28th largest market. And they diversified and uh, went into uh, sports, and so I moved into, I was actually the general manager of the Durham Bulls uh, for six years because we bought the Bulls and developed that. Uh, then left that and we bought, you know, being broadcasters, why not buy a million square feet of uh, old tobacco warehouses and refurbish that in downtown Durham. So I uh, went and did that. But the common thread that I discovered was uh, team building, motivating, engaging, uh, spreading the vision if you will, and you're hearing a lot of that in these sessions here this week. So, I got to tell you, so we, you're, we, we're a baseball guy. We've had some baseball <laughs> guys. We, you know, we've been called the ESPN of tech, so we had Reggie Jackson on <laughs> oh. at, at SAP Sapphire. We Mr. had a guy October. named Jim, Jim Corsi. We had Mr. October on. He was the biggest baseball guy. Uh, Jim Corsi, who was a former player for the Boston Red Sox, yep. came on. Yep. And Billy Bean, and we have Billy Bean wow. on again at the uh, Vertica event. Really? Yeah, yeah we're going to do the Vertica event in August. Interesting story there. So we all know that one. So, yeah. Great. So well, I'm the going Durham to the Bulls, uh, Red Sox-Yankees uh, game Friday night oh, with my son. Awesome. He's coming to town. Red Sox, big surprise this year. But so, um, yeah, nice. So anyway, you know, you're in good company here in the, in the, in the, in the cube. But, and, and of course, data and baseball is really interesting. Oh uh, yeah, on there, right? absolutely. <laughs> well, there's the whole uh, Sabre group, the- uh, Sabre metrics, right? Yeah, uh, where the, um, uh, that uh, methodology for the Oakland A's came out of. And uh, talk about data, gosh, there's, there's just a ton of it. But that's an interesting mix because it's a very traditional industry. Uh, they, they celebrate their history and the tradition of baseball greatly, yet you have uh, this new element that has moved in that is so data oriented. Much like in healthcare, uh, it's very traditionally the MD is the, the king of the hill, and yet you've got next door, the uh, here right in uh, Boston, the Institute for Healthcare Improvement pushing change. Hey, let's flatten the hierarchy. Uh, let's, let's form teams. Let's get, get to know uh, the people we're working with better. Let's uh, communicate more effectively. So uh, I'd see a lot of parallels there. Yeah, and, and how does, uh, I wonder, in your experience, how, how do you handle 
uh, or, or help shepherd in that change when you've got you know, a traditional way of doing things, an industry like healthcare, even finance to a degree, um, when you, you're looking to do, in this case, more data-driven uh, workflows and business processes versus kind of more um, gut-based or instinct-based uh, ways of doing business, and you've got, as, you know, in healthcare, the MD, as you said, is kind of the king of the hill, and, right. and, and change is coming to that world. How do you get buy-in? And, and kind of how do you usher in that change in a way that's uh, effective? Well, the answer is uh, it's not always easy. You have to create it at the top first. Mm -hmm. you, there has to be a culture wherein uh, we decide that we are going to make some changes here. Uh, it's easy in a startup, and I work with a lot of startups. But uh, it ha again, it has to start at the top. And, and when I work with clients, I, I always take them back to basics. You know, it's the when the going gets tough, the tough get going. I say when the going gets tough, Let's get back to basics. And there are just a few uh, basic tenets of uh, leading and managing uh, and communicating and teamwork that I bring people back to and we, we uh, take everything else off the table and we just work on those and then build back around those. Mm -hmm no matter what the industry is. So could you share a couple of those with us? Um, obviously, I'm sure they're, they're pretty more in-depth than the time we have, but if you, you can get really deep. Yeah, so maybe if you could just share a couple of uh, high-level concepts, well, that would be great. Uh, John Cotter, who's also out of Harvard here, uh, emeritus professor in the business school, uh, drew distinctions between leading and managing. Leading is coping with complexity. I mean, coping with change. Leading is, think about that, coping with change. You're, you're looking out over the bow the whole time to let everybody in the ship know where you're going. And hey, the, the winds have changed, the currents have changed, we need to adjust to that. Uh, and a lot of companies are slow to do that. And of course, the bigger they are, the, it's like turning a, a, a stampede of cattle. Uh, Cotter also said that management is about coping with complexity, okay? So while we gotta have one eye looking forward, we gotta be taking care of the, the ship as it's running now. And then you've got to uh, share what you find out as the person out front, a leader, so that everybody in the organization will understand. And it gets very complex, uh, A, when you have a lot of PhDs working in your organization, <laughs> and uh, B, the larger you get. Yeah, this is a, there's, a, there's a bromide in the big data world of, you know, you can't take the humans out of the equation, and, right. and that's got to strike, you know, to your philosophy. Right, it, oh, absolutely. Um, what data, quality problems are being caused because somebody didn't communicate effectively to team A or team B and ruffled some feathers or uh, created confusion or uh, gave incomplete information so that they were working on the wrong uh, project, taking the wrong uh, fork in the road. And what's the cost of recovering from that, right? So Peter, I want to ask you about some, one of your philosophies. It's, it's, I, I read here that you believe that team members benefit from training when they're able to apply their behavioral preferences and core values to team and organizational goals. Yes. So I want you to talk about that a, a little bit. Um, Jeff and I were, were prepping last night, and I said, okay, well, I have you know, a particular style. I have uh -huh. a behavioral preference. You know? right. Sometimes I snap <laughs> out. You know? <laughs> is no, that a good does thing <laughs> to bring to an organization? Occasionally. Okay. So, <laughs> Occasionally. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. All in favor? Yeah. 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 Okay, all right, I believe <laughs> you know me. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you mean by that? And how do you turn something like I just described into a positive? Well, uh, there's uh, psychoanalysis, which I won't recommend you for. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know enough about you. Um, and there are all of the uh, chronic uh, condition uh, sciences and therapies. Uh, what I do is coach people and coach teams. And that's all about looking forward, okay? It doesn't matter so much to me uh, what happened to you as a child, okay? What matters to me is the tools that you have now. Although, you know, if you want to tell me about your childhood sometime, that's fine. But it's, it's the tools that you have now, it's the ones that we identify that you're missing that uh, may, talk about sports, a five tool player. You yeah, know the right. five tools yeah, in baseball, okay? Yeah. Well, I talk to a lot of, of executives about if five tools is the uh, pinnacle uh, of in baseball, uh, what's the pinnacle in your business? And if that's five tools, how many do you think you're operating with and what's the gap and how are we going to define that and work on it? Okay, and the preferences mm. come in. Uh, there are all sorts of assessments, whether it's Myers-Briggs or DISC, uh, whatever, 360s. 
Um, what is your comfort zone? You're, you're born using your right hand to do almost everything, yet you have this other hand to work with, okay? Same way in how you uh, take in information. Same way in how you make decisions based on that information. You have preferences in that. Okay, well, let's play with the uh, non-preferences for a little while and see if that will uh, help you achieve the goals you're trying to achieve. Well, okay. I love that philosophy. So essentially accentuate the positives, identify areas where potentially you could use your other hand and see if you can close that gap and become proficient in some of those other disciplines or align with those that are proficient if you, in fact you don't feel as though you're going to be exactly. able to Exactly, and there. think about that in your team, no, all totally. the folks you work with. Think about that in Jeff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a... We do all the time, don't we, Jeff? <laughs> well, <laughs> Uh, but Occasionally, yes. Really, think about that in a large team. Uh, where And uh, another interesting thing about uh, data science is that there, uh, if you look at a national representative sample just on the Myers-Briggs, uh, data scientists don't stick to that pattern, okay? A uh, lot of people who take in information uh, in the big picture because they're, they're putting packages together. A lot of people make decisions based on logic, not on... Uh, feelings or harmony or values, mm -hmm. and how do they fit into the rest of the organization, okay, where the, the preferences might be different. So that's what I enjoy working on. Excellent. Peter Anlian, thanks very much. Really interesting stuff. Uh, really appreciate your time and the effort that you put forth here at uh, the MIT uh, Information Quality Symposium. So Thanks pleasure. again for being here. All right, keep it right there, everybody. I'll be back with Jeff Kelly. This is the Cube Silicon Angles production here. We're here for two days. Eli Khan is here, he's up next. Uh, he's an executive at Squirrel, which was born out of the NSA, a very data-driven organization, and we're going to talk to him. Keep it right there, we'll be right back.